guys hello friends hello jesus your boy again falling with a star so guys i want us to look at this topic called glycogen metabolism and when you take glycogen metabolism it is being divided into two parts we have glycogenesis which is formation of what glycogen and we have glycogenolysis which is the breakdown of what glycogen to get what glucose so let's pick the first one which is glycogenesis and look at it but before we even talk about glycogenesis which is the formation of glycogen let's look at some facts about what glycogen the first thing i'll talk about is that glycogen is a what a polysaccharide glycogen is a polysaccharide this glucose here is a monosaccharide and you put plenty of this uh, monosaccharide together to get what this polysaccharide so you put plenty glucose together to get what glycogen which is what a polysaccharide the second one i'm going to talk about is that glycogen has both linear chains and what branch chains it has both what linear chains and branch chains so you can see it has these linear chains and also these branch chains so you can see the branch understand and the linear chains the glucose units that form the linear chain they are being joined to each other by what a certain bond we call alpha one for glycosidic bond so the linear chains this linear chains this bond is what we call the alpha one for glycosidic bond because it is between the first carbon here and the fourth carbon of the other glucose so it is called the alpha one for glycosidic bond but for the branch chains the glucose that's the glucose subunits that form the branchings they are being joined to each other by a certain bond we call the alpha one cis glycosidic bond so this branching is that bond here is called alpha one cis glycosidic bond these two is called alpha one cis glycosidic bond you understand and the linear chains the bond there is what alpha one for what glycosidic bond so now let's talk about glycogenesis when does glycogenesis okay you see after meal during the first stage when you take in a food you see that your blood glucose level gets high you understand your blood glucose level increases so the excess glucose the excess glucose in your blood are being stored in the bank or being saved in the bank and the name of these banks are the the liver and also what the muscle so your your body stores what the excess glucose in the what in the liver or in the muscle so the uh, the liver can store like 100 gram of what glycogen glucose 100 gram uh, gram of glucose in the form of what glycogen and your muscles too can store 300 to what 400 gram grams of what glucose in the form of glycogen you understand yeah and these two banks these two banks the liver and the muscle they have different purposes for storing what glucose in the form of glycogen they have different purposes for storing glucose in the form of what glycogen and in the liver the purpose for storing what uh, glucose in the form of glycogen is to maintain blood glucose level in future when your blood glu uh, glucose level is low during the hypoglycemia state hypoglycemia state so the function of the liver the reason why the liver is storing this glucose in the form of glycogen is to maintain the blood glu glucose level in future when your blood glucose level is down and in the muscle the reason why your muscle your muscles the skeletal muscles you understand the reason why they are storing glucose in the form of glycogen is to serve as what well as a source of energy when your body needs what energy in the form of atp that goes to what the glycogen and break it down and break it down to what glucose and glucose will be used in glycolysis to get what energy so their main purpose is to what to serve as a source of what energy in future serve as a source of what energy in future the last fact that i'm going to talk about is that normal glucose gives a net of what two atp a normal glucose will give you a net of what two ATP during glycolysis, but glucose from what glycogen gives what a net of what three ATP during what glycolysis. You understand when I stand when I start uh, describing the pathway. You understand. So now the question is, how does the body store glucose in the form of what glycogen? How does the body store glucose in the form of what glycogen? So let's look at something here. <clears throat> sorry so this glucose let's say that this glucose you've eaten 
and now there is more glucose in your blood. So the glucose will enter into the liver by this transporter. This glucose, it will enter into the liver by this transporter we call GLU2. GLU2, glucose transporter 2. And this glucose transporter 2, one thing about, about it is that it is insulin independent. It doesn't depend on what? Insulin. And also, this glucose can enter into the skeletal muscles by this channel or this transporter called GLUT4. GLUT4. So in the muscles, it is GLUT4. And in the liver, it is what? GLUT2. And this GLUT4 is what? Insulin dependent. It depends on insulin. You understand? Yeah, it depends on insulin. So glycogen synthesis occurs in the what? In the uh, in the liver and also in the muscle. So these are the two places that glycogen synthesis occurs. You understand? So in the liver, the glucose enters by this uh, transporter GLU2, and in the in the muscle, this glucose enter enter uh, the muscle cells by this transporter called what GLU4, which is what insulin dependent. And now the question is, what happens to glucose nest? What happens to glucose next? <coughs> Sorry. This glucose will be converted to what? Glucose 6-phosphate. So, uh, by the help of ATP, we will get this phosphate from ATP. So, this phosphate will be added to the seed carbon of what? Glucose. You see, when you look at the structure of glucose, it is being made up of 6 carbons. So, it's a 6 carbon compound. Carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You understand and this phosphate is being added to what the seed carbon you understand and the glucose will be converted to what glucose says phos uh, phosphate and this process is being catalyzed by the enzyme we call glucokinase when this process is occur occurring in the what in the liver the enzyme that does this is called what glucokinase but in the muscle the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of what glucose to what glucose says phosphate is what hesokinase Hesokinase, you understand? Hesokinase. So, so yeah. now we have this glucose 6 phosphate. Now we have this glucose 6 phosphate. And this glucose 6 phosphate will be converted to what? Glucose 1 phosphate. Glucose 1 phosphate. By the help of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. Phosphoglucomutase. Why are we converting glucose 6 phosphate to what? Glucose 1 phosphate. <coughs> it's because. We need glucose one phosphate rather to form what glycogen, not glucose six phosphate. So this glucose six phosphate will be converted to what glucose one phosphate by the help of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. And this reaction is what reversible. This reaction is what reversible, meaning glucose six phosphate can be converted to what glucose one phosphate, and glucose one phosphate can also be converted to what glucose six phosphate by the same enzyme phosphoglucomutase. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So now let's look at something here. Now we have this glucose one phosphate. Let's put it, let's put it at somewhere. You understand? Let's, let's look at this compound here or this molecule here. This compound here is called uridine triphosphate. Uridine triphosphate. Uridine plus what three phosphates. And uridine is being made up of uracil and what ribose. So uracil plus ribose comes together to first get what uridine. So uridine plus what three what phosphate you get what uridine triphosphate or UTP or UTP. So this uridine triphosphate will be broken down into what uridine monophosphate and what pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate is what two phosphates linked together. So these two phosphate linked together is called what what pyrophosphate. And we have uridine monophosphate. Uridine plus only one phosphate is called what? Uridine monophosphate. And this uridine monophosphate will be added to what? The glucose one phosphate. Uridine monophosphate will be added to what? This glucose one phosphate and be converted to what? UDP what? Glucose. UDP glucose. So glucose one phosphate plus what? Uridine monophosphate comes together to first get what? UDP what? Glucose. And this whole pro uh, process. This whole process is being catalyzed by the enzyme called UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. So this is the enzyme that catalyzes this whole process. And we get what UDP what? Glucose. And this UDP glucose serves as what blocks for building the house glycogen. So glycogen, let's look at glycogen as a house. So the UDP glucose serves as what? The blocks. For building the house glycogen but before we can even build this house glycogen we need a foundation 
you need a foundation and that foundation is called glycogenic that foundation is called what glycogenic so glycogenic serve as what the foundation for the building of the house what glycogen you understand so glycogenin is what a primer that means the starter and also it contains the amino acid tyrosine you understand it contains the amino acid tyrosine and this glycogen will start the what the process the building of what glycogen so it will it will add it will add like 10 to 20 glucose to itself it will add like 10 to what 20 glucose to itself and when it is adding the uh, the glucose to itself. You see, it will take the UDP glucose, and it will try adding the UDP glucose to itself. But it will cut the UDP from what the glucose and add only the glucose to itself. So you get UDP as what byproduct. You understand? You get UDP as what byproduct. So it will add like 10 to 20 glucose to itself. After that, it gets tired. It gets tired and allows some builders to continue the process, the building process, and these builders. There are two. We have the glycogen synthase and the branching enzyme. So these are the, these are the two builders that will continue the process. Glycogen synthase and what branching enzyme. So glycogen synthase will help. Glycogen synthase will help in the formation of what the linear chain. So it will help in the formation of the alpha one for glycosidic bond. So it will form these linear chains of what glucose. So these are all by the works of what glycogen synthesis, and these bonds are alpha one for glycosidic bonds. You understand? Ha! Huh, glycogen synthesis. That is its duty. But the branching enzyme, the branching enzyme, it has two spirits in he, in him. It has two spirits in him. The first spirit is that it has the ability. It has the ability to cut what. Alpha 1 for glycosidic bonds. It has the ability to cut what alpha 1 for glycosidic bonds. So, in other words, we say that it has what alpha 1 for glycosidase activity. Alpha 1 for glycosidase activity. So, it will cut this alpha 1 for bond. After cutting this alpha 1 for bond, then it will put it on what? On this, on this glucose. You understand? So, it will link this chain to what? The seized carbon of what? This glucose. So, it also have it also has the ability to what form what alpha one says glycosidic bonds. So after cutting the alpha one for glycosidic bond, it add what the glucose this chain to what the seed carbon of what this glucose. In other words, it forms this what alpha one says what glycosidic bond. You understand? So branching enzyme has two what spirits in him. It has the ability to cut what alpha one for glycosidic bonds. After that, it has the ability to form what alpha one says glycosidic bond. And true. Uh, these processes through these processes they help us to get what the uh, glycogen so this is what glycogen this glycogen so that's it for glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis so guys now let's look at the regulation the regulation of what glycogenesis the regulation of what glycogenesis so we have two main ways to regulate what glycogenesis we have the allosteric regulation and we also have the hormonal regulation allosteric regulation is when molecules bind to what the allosteric sites of what enzymes to either activate the enzymes or what deactivate the enzyme and hormonal regulation is when hormones actually uh, activate enzymes or what deactivate what enzymes so now before we even talk about the regulation pathway the main enzyme that is being regulated in what glycogen you know, um, that is being regulated in glycogenesis is the glycogen synthase the glycogen synthase and this glycogen synthase can exist in two forms can exist in the a form and also the b form in the a form is the a form is said to be what the active form because in the a form there is no phosphate bind to it but in the B form, it's said to be the what inactive form, and there is a phosphate bind to it. So whenever glycogen synthase has a phosphate attached to it, it becomes what inactive, and we say that it is in the B form. But whenever the phosphate is being removed, it is being converted back to the what the A form, which is the active form. So now let's look at the first regulation, the hormonal regulation. So the main enzyme that activates glycogenesis that helps what glycogenesis to okay it's what insulin and this insulin is being released by the 
the pancreas, the beta cells of what the uh, the pancreas. So this insulin will go and bind to what this receptor, the tyrosine receptor, the uh, receptor for insulin is what tyrosine receptor. So when insulin binds to this rece uh, receptor, insulin activates this enzyme. This enzyme is called phosphoprotein phosphatase. Phosphoprotein phosphatase. And this phosphoprotein phosphatase, whenever it gets activated, it removes what phosphate from what glycogen synthase. So when let's say that glycogen synthase is in the B form. So whenever this phosphoprotein phosphatase gets activated, it removes this phosphate from what the glycogen synthase and converts it to the active state, which is the what the A form. And glycogen synthase helps in the what information of what glycogen. You understand? So this glyco uh, phospho phosphoprotein phosphatase helps activate what glycogenesis. But you know that the antagonist of what insulin is what glucagon and this glucagon also binds to this receptor which is, which we call the g protein couple receptor g protein couple receptor and when glucagon binds to this receptor it activates a certain enzyme in the membrane in the cell membrane called what adenylated cyclase and this adenylated cyclase whenever it gets activated it converts atp to what cyclic amp so adenylated cyclase, whenever it gets activated, it converts ATP to a cyclic AMP. And this cyclic AMP will further go and activate this, this enzyme we called protein kinase A. Protein kinase A. And one thing about kinases is that they help in what phosphorylation. They add what phosphates to what molecules. So this protein kinase A can add phosphate to what this glycogen synthase and convert it from that the A form to what the B form. That means it will convert it from the active form to the inactive form, and in so doing, it inhibits what glycogenesis. It inhibits what glycogenesis. No epinephrine and epinephrine can also do the same thing to inhibit what glycogenesis. So now let's look at the allosteric regulation. For the allosteric regulation, you see the enzyme, they have this site we call the allosteric site. They also have another site called the active site. And at the allosteric site, molecules bind to that place to either activate the enzyme or what deactivates the enzyme. It depends on the molecule being attached to that place. So a molecule like glucose, when there is high glucose in the blood, when there is high glucose in the blood, that means that we have to store the excess glucose to what glycogen. So it will it will activate what the glycogen synthase to help in the formation of what glycogen. You understand? So in other words, free glucose will help in what glycogenesis. Also, glucosase phosphate. Whenever there is high glucosase phosphate in the blood, it can also uh, uh, allosteric allosterically uh, activate the enzyme what glycogen synthase to help for more glycogenesis to occur. When there is high ATP, it means that there is more glucose. And that's why we are breaking more the more glucose to what ATP uh, to pyruvate to get what ATP. So whenever there is high ATP, it means that there is more glucose. And high ATP will also allosterically activate the enzyme glycogen synthase. You understand? And also when there is high AMP, it means that there is no there is no what energy. You understand? In other sense, we need glucose. We need to break down glucose. To get what energy from them so that will inhibit what the enzyme glycogen synthase because now we need glucose we need to break down glucose not to use the glucose to form what glycogen you understand so that's for the allosteric regulation thank you